We're going to measure our opening here, and it's just over 50 inches. We're, what we're measuring for is our baluster spacing. So we're measuring it not on the slant right now, but we want to make sure our spacing's under our four inch gap, and we're using a half inch baluster, so we have to stay under four and a half inch on center. Okay, we have just over 50 inches. Divide that by four and a quarter, it, it would keep us under our uh, four and a half inch spacing, and uh, it gives us 11 balusters. So then we're going to measure diagonally here. Divide this, get our center mark, okay? So we're at 64 inches, we're gonna be at 32 inches for our center mark, okay? Then we're gonna divide this by 11, our measurement by 11, and it, it works out to five and a half inches um, with leaving just a little bit extra on each end. If we did it exactly the spacing, we'd be pretty close here. So we're also, 11's pushing it, we're right at the edge of it. So we're gonna, we're gonna set our compass at five and a half inches. So we pick up our, I already have this set at five and a half. We have our center mark, and we're just gonna go through and mark every five and a half inches. This is our center line. Oh, we, um, I did put a center line in here, measured center on our wall, center on our post, and took a level and drew a center line straight up and down. So we have this center line right here, and now we're putting in our baluster location. Mark going down. Okay, we'll show you how to mark the tops. One way to do it is most people are going to have to use a level like this. So you, you, can st you normally start at your bottom or your top, but just for use on the camera, we're gonna start kind of in the middle where you can see it a little bit better. So we're gonna put this right on our mark on the bottom, get it nice and level, and then put a mark right where our baluster is gonna go. Okay, just do that on every one, and then on your top rail, after you have the, the baluster marks, mark the center of the rail. Just measure and mark the center of a rail so you have the center, a center mark right here also. We usually use a laser. I'll show you how to do that. Most people won't have a laser, but the level works just fine. Okay, we have our laser plumb here and we have a, a wood block cut at, uh, again, approximately 40 degree angle that will hold our laser level on here. And we get our laser mark on our center line here and then just transfer it up top here. Very easy, but again, it's about a $100, uh, $100 tool. Most people won't buy it just to do one job. If you don't have this, uh, more than likely you have a, a four foot level like we showed you, just use your level and mark top and bottom. It, uh, both are uh, quality ways to do it. Okay, we have all our marks in our center line. We're gonna drill the bottoms approximately half inch deep. Now, we're gonna start it and then straighten it up. This drill has a level on it, so it is important that you get it nice and straight. Normally we would do it with the vacuum right here, but be between noise and the other person holding the camera, a little difficult to do. Okay, do all the holes like that. We're gonna drill the tops. We have a vacuum set up. You can just have somebody hold it, but, um, so we're gonna drill the tops, and I have a mark on the drill where we're gonna stop before we go through the top of the rail, of course. Okay, this is where we're going to measure for our baluster lengths. After we measure, um, after we got all our measurements, you probably want to do all the painting in here. We're not going to do that today just because we can't sit around waiting for paint to dry to install the balusters to show you that. So start at the bottom, 
there's 11 pieces. So the first ballast there, we're going to measure to the top of the hole just enough to clear. So we're going to be 31 and a half. And I've already measured this, but since our rail is very consistent with our uh, knee wall, it's going to be the same on all 11 is the top one is also 31 and a half. Yep. Um, if, if there was, we're doing all plain bar, that's just what the customer wanted in this job. If there was a design, we would have to cut both top and bottom of the baluster to keep it in the center. There, the center of the pattern is normally 18 inches off center. Um, you can buy a Neowall series that would put it closer to the center. And that in this particular situation, it would help. Not all pieces are available in the new wall, but if not, all you have to do is cut an equal amount off the top. One inch, two inches, whatever would put your design piece in the middle. Okay, we have them all marked 31 and a half inches long. I'll show you a couple of different ways to cut them. We're actually gonna cut these backwards. Um, by backwards, I mean, normally the round end is the top. Um, I like to cut that off so it's nice and tight in the hole, but uh, since they're all plain bar, Instead of cutting that, cutting the top and then cutting our 31 and a half, we're just going to cut it um, from the flat end. This is a, a bandsaw. Best thing to cut them with, but it's a $300 tool. Most people won't have this, but it cuts them like butter. Cut. This is an abrasive cutoff wheel. You can also get one of these for a circular saw. Take the burr off the end. Watch it will be hot for a couple minutes. Okay, this is a sawzall with a metal cutting blade on it. Okay, we have all our pieces dry fit. So what we're gonna do is get them all in place. And then I like to come back and then just take your epoxy, shoot it in from the side. It's very strong stuff, you don't need too much. That way you can keep your epoxy going. Just make sure the ballast is straight because it does set up pretty quick. Okay, that's simple.